In this video series, I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and easy GPS route using Google Earth. You can then take that GPS route and export it to Gaia Maps. To start, you're gonna to wanna to create a folder. For, for example, this trip we're doing, we're calling it the Wander Up Yonder. Once that folder is created, everything, either a route or uh, a pin, a map marker, whatever you want to call it, is going to go into that folder. So for this route, we're going to be starting off by taking the ferry here in uh, Tobermory. So I'm going to drop a place marker. Uh, we'll just call it the um, you know ferry crossing. Over here, you can choose a variety of little icons. For instance, where this is a ferry, so I'm going to select the ferry. You said OK, it'll save it, and it puts it in the folder you just created. When you're ready to actually create a route, you can go up here to the uh, path maker and create a new path. You might as well name it something. So for instance, this, we're doing a path for day one. So I'll just label it day one. See what I did there? I didn't mean to do it, but if you close that little window that popped up, you can't use the path tool anymore. So what you have to do is go back to it and right, right click on it, select properties, and boom, it pops up again and there's your path tool. So from here, you can start making your path. This is a ferry crossing, so there's really not a path I can make except for just following the path that's in Google. You can move the map around with your arrow keys or your WSAD keys if you're a gamer. You can also make that path any color you want. So for day one, we might as well go with red. Uh, you can change the width. I usually like to give it a good good girth around three or so. You know, that way you can actually see it on the map. Uh, so from from there, you can zoom in a little bit with your uh, mouse wheel. You'll get back, you know, there's where the ferry gets off. Then we want to continue along the main highway here. With main highways, it's pretty easy. You can just give generic points where you're going because they're very visible and you're going to be following it pretty easily. So you can keep going along, making your route, la da 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 da. Nice thing about Manitoulin Island is there aren't very many roads, and the roads are pretty predictable. They're very straight, they have a couple bends. Again, very straight. <laughs> A couple of bends. It's a very flat piece of land. Now at any time as you're going along and your hand spasms out and oops you made a mistake you can always just hit the right most button to delete the last waypoint. As you get closer to the side roads or 4x4 trails, it is a lot easier to zoom in and get a better view of the area that you're going to be working with. This way, it's also a lot more accurate as well. It's especially helpful if you're going to be doing a lot of trails. You'll see later on when I start doing logging roads for pre for following days, it's just easier to zoom right in and get as accurate as possible because the last thing you want to do is get lost in the middle of nowhere. There. That is going to bring us to our campsite for the night. 
It's a small plot of crown land on that tool island. There's not much, but man, is it ever a beautiful spot. It's even got a shipwreck right there. Look at that. It's amazing. And another helpful tool where you have the property window open for the paths is the whole path. You can go to the measurements. You can see in miles for you Americans. Or, you know, like a proper unit of measurement, kilometers. There. So, that's the path for day one. We take the ferry, pretty much go all the way across the island just to find a camping spot. But, that's Ontario for you. There's not too much crown land uh, <laughs> south of, south of uh, the North Channel. Don't forget, the easy way to put any kind of points of interest that you want to check out for instance, this is on day two, when we're leaving Manitoulin Island. There, we are passing a very, very beautiful waterfall here at Bridalvale Falls in Kagawan. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of waterfall marker here. Eh, that's close enough. But this is Bridalvale Falls. It is definitely a must stop if you're on the island. This kind of area can get a little bit tricky because I'm approaching our second campsite, but you can barely make out the road to get in there. Of course, the poor satellite image doesn't help, but at least this way, zoomed in, you can make small, smaller waypoints and therefore find the road you're looking for and mark it fairly accurately. And I'll get out of that and I'll put a marker down here for our campsite. Just, you know, because. And because there's nice little tents like that. So, so far, by zooming all the way out, you'll be able to see your route fairly easily. It's a good idea before you go any further, just save my places. So here we are on day three. This is when we start to get a little bit more detailed into plotting your, your waypoints. You, you want to be as close as possible to get the most accurate. Luckily for this section, I have an old GPS track that we did a couple years ago. We're following basically the same route through these old logging roads. So it makes it a little bit easier and quicker uh, to, to make a path going through. But at the same time, you can still make out the road if you were to do it for the first time. Now this will show you exactly the benefit of, uh, of good satellite imagery. You know, on my right, it's not very great. But then all of a sudden, it becomes, you know, clear as, clear as day. You can pretty much even pick out a couple campsites. But, you know, just because you can see it from the air doesn't mean you can actually get to it. I've ran into that many, many times. This is truly, you know, a trial and error. You know, you mark out a route, there's no guarantee what you see on Google Earth is what you're going to get when you get there. I mean, this, this whole area was ravaged by a forest fire almost 80 years ago. 
you know, it, it's it's come back nicely, but there's still some sections where you can tell where the forest fire has gone through and just completely decimated the area, and it'll, it'll never recover. And then there's still active logging as well. You have to consider that. You know, you could be meeting some logging trucks on these roads. And believe me, <laughs> I know from experience, they are not going to stop. Another very helpful feature in Google Earth is these little photo bumps. You can click on it and you can see exactly the area you're looking at. And some of them, you know, it's a perfect spot to find camping sites. You know, that you can tell they're accessible by vehicles. You know, vehicles have been there. It's 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 a camping site on Crown Land. It's pretty easy to find. Well, there you have it. By the end of uh, your experimentation in Google Earth, you know you should end up having something like this. You know, very nice, clean, easy to easy to find routes that are broken up. You know, like like I said, I broke them up by days. It just it it allows you to keep track of the kilometers that you're looking at. You know, any kind of stops that you want to put along the way. Anything like that. It's just, it's it's a very easy to use and very, very, very helpful tool when you're planning a trip. When you're done your route and you want to look at transferring it to your GPS. So the easiest way I have found to do it is right clicking on the folder that you created. Should have all your information. Make sure all your routes are in there. All your waypoints, everything. So you want to save, save this place as it says, you know, look for where you want to save the KMZ file, which is your Google, Google Earth file. So you're going to save that. Now, remember where you saved it. Uploading your GPS route couldn't be easier when using Gaia GPS. All you have to do once you're on their website is to go to your account and hit upload. From there, you just select the file that you're looking for. From there, all you have to do is select the route you made in Google Earth, click on it, hit open, and hit upload. After a few seconds, it'll be successfully uploaded to Gaia GPS. And thanks to their cloud-based service, you can use it on your mobile phone, your tablet, or the website. If you're using another GPS program that will not let you upload uh, KMZ files, uh, you can go to gpsvisualizer.com. Uh, once you're on that website, all you have to do is choose the file you'd like to convert to a GPX. So we'll take that file straight from Google Earth uh, and choose your output file as a GPX file and hit convert. And right there is your GPX file converted from a KML file. The GPX file you should be able to import to any any GPS, like handheld GPS unit, like a Garmin. Uh, most apps will also allow you to import a GPX file. Uh, in the past, when I used Hema Maps, I had to do it this way. Um, basically, I had to email myself the GPX file and then import it from my email into the HEMA Explorer app, which was a real pain in the ass. That was the main reason why I switched over to Gaia. So that'll wrap it up for this video. In the next video, I'll go further into Gaia GPS and show you how to navigate around using the back road map books.